Okay, so the introduction, um, and you've probably seen some of this before. Uh, you might start with a quotation, a provocative question. Now, when it says quotation, um, some people go and get like, you know, something completely irrelevant to the story. Uh, I'll show you how you might even use one from the story itself. Uh, you don't need to try to be dramatic with that. Um, a provocative question is one that provokes thought, all right? Um, this could also be uh, using, and along with like startling statement, you might use other interpretations of the story and then contrast yours to that. So especially like we did with the um, with the lenses assignment, you might say some people read this, see this as a simple story of whatever, whatever, or they think that the uh, that viewing it through a feminist lens is the way to find its best meaning. So something along that. But a provocative question could, could just be, what does it mean to be um, an adolescent and to push boundaries and have to confront those consequences? Right. I'm talking about Connie in that case. Uh, so something along those lines. A brief anecdote could be. Um, a story that is uh, that is not necessarily a piece of fiction. Maybe it's a uh, something that's happened in the news, um, or something about World War II. If you're doing, um, you know, about PTSD or something. If you're doing, for Esme with Love and Squalor, a startling statement is similar to a provocative question. It's just not, excuse me, a question. It's a statement. Um, did you, you know, something might be a fact that you research, uh, but try to keep things kind of really relevant, clearly relevant. All right. Um, or a combination of these. You may also want to include background information relevant to your thesis. So if somebody was doing, they wanted to talk about uh, the situation for the narrator of Yellow Wallpaper, and they wanted to talk about how psychology or psych um, psychiatry has changed over the years, you should do, if you're going to do that, you should do some sort of research and connect it directly to uh, what was going on in psychology in the year that the story was written. Okay, uh, how common is the narrator's experience. You get some of that from the letter that she wrote, why I wrote Yellow Wallpaper, um, or something about PTSD that is relevant. Maybe not a statistic of how many, well, could be how many people have PTSD, um, but it might be just what we thought of PTSD during World War II um, and how it's going to relate to, the thing is it should relate to your story. So if you were doing that, then uh, your discussion of Sergeant X would focus on, would be one that focuses on how, um, you know, other people at home in the letters he writes, or someone like Clay, don't recognize his trauma as something serious or real, because you want to connect that relevant information in a relevant way. So these are some examples um, that also are other ways that you could do it, um, or of doing it, of doing what I just said. What would one expect to be the personality of a man who has his wife sent away to a convent, or perhaps has had her murdered because she took too much pleasure in the sunset, and in a compliment paid to her by another man? So this obviously is not about one of our stories, but um, you could set a premise for the yellow wallpaper like this. Um, instead of sending away to a convent, um, you know, taking away uh, her passions, or what would be what would one expect to be the personality of a man who has lost his wife uh, to a murderer and his memory, right? Um, and then you're introducing us to a character analysis of uh, yours might not be a character analysis. You can compare the story, so this would be more of a thematic connection um, or character connection. Right, the first paragraph of this guy's short story, The Secret Lion, presents a 12-year-old boy's view of growing up. Everything changes. Again, this could be uh, Joyce Carol Oates' short story, Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been? Because everything changes as the narrator informs the reader when the magician pulls a tablecloth out from under a pile of dishes. Uh, children are amazed at the stay the same part, while adults focus only on the tablecloth itself. This is drawn from the story and used as an introduction. So he's quoting the story itself. Um, and then drawing a thematic conclusion. Adults have the benefit of experience and know the trick will work as long as the trick is correct. So this is sort of part of the theme when people, and here's the theme, when people grow up, they gain this experience and knowledge but lose their innocence and sense of wonder. In other words, paying the price for growing up is a permanent sense of loss. Again, Connie's story could be interpreted as uh, growing up and losing, losing the sense of innocence and wonder. All right, so these are different stories, but you see what they're doing with their introduction, hopefully. Okay, and this is your standard literary analysis essay conclusion. Um, and this basically tells us, gives, I, how does a student give us a sense of completeness? Um, that's how you frame things. So even if you're rewording your thesis, you're rewording it in a way where the reader knows everything that you just supported it with. So 
Uh, I know that's not clear instruction um, because that's about word choices, aka diction, and how you reframe what you said in the beginning. Because in the beginning, you're about to show us something or prove something. And at the end, you're stating what you just proved. So there should be an element of confidence, uh, an element of that you just established understanding. Again, that's hard to illustrate, and I'll show you one uh, example. Um, you summarize the main points, make a relevant comment about literary work, uh, but from a different perspective. So maybe, uh, uh, maybe um, shifting from not just the feminist lens to maybe how uh, a friend of yours, a girl you know, read this, or um, how a guy read it and did not get certain things on the first reading. The other thing you can do that is not listed here, and feel free to take a chance with this, uh, and it's, it sounds like you're introducing a new topic, which this is a hard and fast rule, don't introduce a new topic, but you could, um, you could relate it to something going on in the world. So if it is uh, you know, it's Sergeant X, and uh, we're talking about PTSD in the real world, um, you might connect it somehow to that. If it's about um, you know, isolated characters were your theme, you might relate it to people living through the pandemic and raising hiring rates of, the rising rate of uh, depression and loneliness and mental illness, right? So that's a, that's a thing you can do that's not the same as introducing a new topic. What you're doing there is um, you're saying that your paper is relevant to what's going on in the world, that the themes that you just talked about are not isolated in these stories, that there are other people in the world that um, uh, can relate to this. And so you're not really making it a support. You're just showing maybe a reason to have written this thing, okay? And here's a standard um, conclusion. Um, if the Duke has any redeeming qualities, they fail to appear in the poem. Uh, again, not one of our stories. Browning's emphasis on the Duke's traits of arrogance, jealousy, and materialism make it apparent uh, to anyone who might have known Duke personally, sorry, who might have known the Duke personally, would have based his opinion of him on these three personality flaws. Ultimately, the reader, reader's opinion of Duke is not a favorable one, and it is clear that Browning intended that reader to feel this way. So this is someone whose thesis was that um, this character, uh, his focus would be on uh, flaws and negative qualities. of All right, so there are a few ways to do this. And a basic conclusion that restates the thesis in different words and summarizes the points. That's fine. You can also take a little risk and talk about a connection to the real, wor real world that is thematic. 